Well, uh, BBC <laughs> Breakfast at bbc.co.uk. Now, uh, the last time we saw Sean was on the programme yesterday, where I believe what now has been referred to as Gate Gate, um, <laughs> somebody was trying to get into Cheshire Oaks and uh, open the gate while a long queue of traffic was waiting, Sean. And did they get that gate open eventually for those who, who didn't see it at the end of the programme yesterday? Yeah, they did. I mean, eventually is even a bit harsh. It was literally minutes later, but because we were live at the end of the programme looking at the gates being opened, you know, they... Well, we'll see it in a moment. The, what do you want to call it? A fumble, the stuck key in a padlock. It, 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 was, it was a shame because like, being there all morning and you know, anybody who works in retail knows so everybody uh, who's on the front line are so passionate. And yesterday was a big day. Some store managers were telling me it felt like Christmas, not just customers flocking, but the gearing up for a, a period of the year. And uh, so it was a big moment for lots of shopkeepers right across England and one of the figures that people watch very closely particularly when we start to look at the economy and how we're really getting through all of this is footfall it's called it's the number of people hitting the shops and uh, if we have a look at the numbers from yesterday uh, high streets in England particularly they saw the biggest change in that number so they were up on last week maybe not a surprise as they were closed last week up by more than 50 percent and there were big jumps in Wales and Northern Ireland too where restrictions slowly Slowly being eased there as well so it shows we're keen to shop more people headed to retail parks as well they've not been as badly hit as maybe the high streets because we've had so many home and food stores being open for a bit longer but the question really is how much closer to normal are we well compared to the same day last year the number of shoppers was down by about a third uh, so <laughs> make of that what you will is is that not as bad as you might have thought it, it's obviously very different in different parts of the country but all in all for anybody opening a shop yesterday it was quite the day there is the moment no pressure oh no pressure but uh, you've got to find the right key haven't you it might not have been the perfect Second, start at Cheshire Oaks Retail Park. Sean, I've got to ask you about key gates. I mean, what, <laughs> what is happening there? It's yeah it, I, I, this has been escalated I think <laughs> uh, but a few minutes later, they managed to get the gates open and the shoppers came in their droves. It was the same picture right across England. Images of queues snaking round shops were replicated on high streets, retail parks, outside shopping centres, everywhere from Bristol to Bishop Auckland. The first shoppers through the door got a warm welcome in Selfridges in London. Top of the shopping list, children's clothes, shoes, kitchenware and new pieces of tech. Really excited, a bit of normality, like a good shopping spree. It's not the same as online shopping. Thing. Just as long as you're, you use your disinfectant and your anti sort of thing and you keep your distance, yeah. it's absolutely fine. I think this is going to be the way of life for a long time. Love it. Love it. <laughs> I haven't been on lockdown because I work for the NHS, but... So nice for the shops to be finally be open. But not everyone was pleased. Packed queues outside the Nike store in central London led some to complain social distancing was incredibly difficult. Meanwhile, large crowds at the Oxfordshire outlet shopping centre Bista Village resulted in a petition calling on the venue to close until it could stop shoppers from being squashed together. Shops have put all sorts of measures in place to try and make their business secure, from the signs, screens and one-way systems we're now used to in supermarkets, to disposable covers for furniture people sit on, and quarantine stock if it is handled but not bought. The number of people hitting the shops might be up on Monday. The test for retailers now is to keep their customers feeling safe and their businesses feeling more sustainable. So there we go. Lots, lots of people back at it. Just before 8 o'clock, I'm going to be speaking to the boss of Debenhams. We know they've had issues before the coronavirus crisis, but they're starting to reopen their stores now as well. And we'll see how that's going for them and, and really what, that, what their plan is now for the weeks to come. Good stuff, Sean. Thanks very much. Of course, unemployment figures out at 7 as well, which Sean will be across too. Busy morning. How many people are going to resonate with Holly this mm. morning? She recently lost her job and was ending that report by Sarah Corker. Um, well, those who can resonate, we can find out exactly how many because Sean's talking is going to talk us through those unemployment figures. So this is a quarterly number, Sean, and it, it includes one full month of lockdown, but obviously there are two months that weren't, when we weren't under lockdown. 
Yes. Uh, so, the, as ever, there's a lot of statistics that come out at the same time. And that unemployment rate that we often talk about, that is the period you're speaking about, from February, March, April, looking at that period where we had lockdown uh, for the whole of April and a small amount of March, that unemployment rate has stayed at 3.9%. So that hasn't moved at all really and that is because of the job retention scheme the furloughing scheme that we've heard people staying on company payrolls not being made unemployment but the government has been subsidizing their wages that has been a major major factor in that but you drill down into some of the other data around today and it gives us a picture of what's really happening the claimant count is the figure where it's the number of people who are claiming benefits, either unemployment benefits or people who are in work on low incomes or not working very many hours who are able to claim benefits. That figure has once again spiked in the month of May. So last month we talked about it going to over 2 million people claiming that. That has now gone up to 2.8 million people in the month of May. That's a good example of how people are being affected by this crisis, whether it's income falling or along the way they're losing their jobs and those figures are taken from May whereas that unemployment rate is February to April. Now other things that have come out this morning, vacancies in May have got to a record low, nearly half a million fewer in the quarter, in the three months up to May than they were in the previous quarter. So those people who were losing their job or looking for other work didn't have anything like the choice that they might have had beforehand. And if you look at the payrolls, the number of people who are on payrolls across the country, we do get some figures for that today about the number of people on payrolls in May. And that was down 600,000 fewer people on payrolls in May. So that gives you an idea that those people are no longer being paid by companies that they were being paid in previous months. And so when we start to get those unemployment figures come through and they start to include the month of May, that is where we're going to start getting a hit because 600,000 fewer people in May were on a payroll than they were before. Yeah, that's when it's really going to hit home, isn't it? But, um, of course, the evidence is there, isn't it? We're going to be talking a lot about this. Um, for time. More than half a million extra people were claiming unemployment benefits in the UK in May. So that brings the total to 2.8 million. This is what Sean is looking at us for this morning, about how coronavirus has been hitting the jobs market. Morning, Sean. Morning. What, what are the figures saying? Yeah, morning. So those figures you mentioned there, the, the 2.8 million people who are now claiming unemployment benefits, they may be people who are actually in, in work on low incomes or working... Uh, fewer hours who are having to claim benefits now or those people that are out of work and that has more than doubled over April and May. We were back at about 1.2 million people in March claiming those benefits now at 2.8 million people. If we look in May at these figures out from the Office of National Statistics this morning about the number of people on payrolls across the country that is expected to have fallen by more than 600,000 in the month of May. So we've sort of been waiting for this data to tell us how March and April through lockdown and into May uh, the economy's been affected. And it seems that May with vacancies uh, around the country at a record low as well. That is where people are really starting to see what's happening in their real lives play out into the numbers that uh, are linked to the jobs market this morning. Sean, thanks very much. Sean's been busy this morning. Had the boss of Debenhams, all these unemployment figures. He's always busy, actually. It's about time we put a shift in, Sean. Oh, I didn't want to say anything. Sean, thanks.